Welcome back to Blue Zone Homestead. Today it's a big day. It's the very first stuffed peppers and cabbages of the season of 2024. Behind me in that pot I've got boiling water and I've got a few layers, out, outer layers of the cabbage leaves. Well, I'm going to blanch for a few minutes. And this is going to be part of our meal. So we're going to get the meat mixture ready. I will talk to you, talk you through about the ingredients. But I'm going to use that before we're going to get a start. So uh, we've got one and a half kilogram of that turkey mince we've just made together. I washed 500 grams of white rice. I'm going to add two eggs. Only a little bit of sprinkle of garlic sourdough breadcrumbs to this meat mixture, onion and garlic powder. I'm probably going to use this as a sauce. We're going to add a bit of basil, salt, tomato powder with salt, a little bit of chili flakes and marjoram. Also, I'm going to add some garlic cloves as well. Maybe we're gonna add about like a small handful, a bit of dill there as well came with it, so that's fine. Um, I'm not sure if I missed anything out. If if we did, I will uh, tell you all about it as we lo as we go along. But basically, I'm going to. I usually pre-cook the rice. I have decided not to pre-cook the rice this time, so. I'm just going to mix everything together and then we go into the garden. We're gonna harvest the peppers and I miss the flower bouquet from the top on the from the table. So we're going to get some flowers along. I've made a little bit of a list, shopping list that we need from the garden, basil, onion, peppers, flowers. So yeah, let's get cooking. After a few minutes, the cabbage leaves are partially cooked from the boiling water and let it cool down so we can touch it and fill it with our meat mixture. I leave this on a side until it cools down. It needs to be cooled down completely before we're going to fill this in with the meat and rice mixture. But look how beautiful this cabbage is. We've harvested the cab this cabbage a few days ago. Right, next we're going to mix all the in mi meat mixture ingredients. So I'm going to add the one and a half kilograms of minced turkey meat we're using today. We're going to add 500 grams of white rice, two egg, and then we're going to add the garlic. I can put a little bit of dill in there, won't hurt extra flavor. Just going to add, just cut up some garlic cloves, about five, six. I am so excited about the first pepper harvest over the year. Okay, so maybe we're gonna leave the garlic powder out now. There's quite a bit of garlic, that's enough, so we don't need this. Right, next we're going to add a teaspoon of marjoram, teaspoons of basil salt, what we've just made not long ago, a bit of chili flakes, maybe just a 
half a teaspoon, tomato powder with salt, a teaspoon, and let's put a teaspoon of onion powder, and a little bit of garlic sourdough breadcrumbs. And we're going to massage this all together. until it's very nicely well combined. And we're gonna add a few more bits and pieces, a few more spices. Looking and smelling good already, friends. Right, this, is, this can marinate nicely. I'll put this back to the fridge for an hour that gives us time to go to the garden, harvest some flowers, harvest the peppers, go to add a few more spices. Dried cumin, goulash powder. I'm adding these things because they need to be used up to be honest. And some paprika powder. Go. White pepper, teaspoons of salt, carbonated seed. Okay, and I'm going to cover this and put it in a fridge. Next, I have got this big pot. That's where we're going to actually cook the peppers and the cabbages. But what I have got in here, I've got about one and a half kilogram tomatoes, what I actually had in the freezer. So I took it out of the freezer yesterday because I'm going through the pantry and freezer now and I'm trying to use up everything what's in there or most of it before the next season vegetables need to be put in so I the way I sometimes preserve tomatoes I just pick it wash it core it put it in a plastic bag and in a freezer and when you take it out it's the skin just peels off so I just peel the skins off these tomatoes and this is now fully thawed and I'm going to put it on a stove, a medium heat, and gonna simmer it there for a good half an hour. And we're going to blitz this and flavor it. And this is gonna be a sauce for our today's meal. Just blitz it. That frozen tomatoes are now thawed. They've been about half an hour on a stove. It cooked so I'm just going to blitz it to a sauce and while everything is cooling I am picking a flower bouquet I am so proud of this little patch of flower bed I've just created this year mainly because uh, we've sown them all from seeds and it's so special I can't believe how well it turned out. It filled that bed perfectly. With all the cosmos, calendula, nasturtium. So pretty. 
I know I always say that, but I really do enjoy collect the cut flowers. They're just so nice. The sweet bees are oh, wow. I was waiting for the sweet before that first flower for forever, and now it's millions. Honestly, I cannot keep up with the cotton and harvested no sweet peas. <laughs> I think this is my one of my favorite dahlia in my garden. The other one is the yellow one I've not seen coming back. It's in my herb garden, so I'm not sure. It usually grows huge because that's been there for years, but I don't know what's happened. I can't see it at the moment, but this one is just dahlia. beautiful. So pretty. And this one is quite established, so I think we're gonna have quite a few flowers coming through the summer. And I've got a lot more around. And our very first gladioli this year is yellow. So wonderful. It is lovely. And since then I've got quite a few gladiolis now opening. Quite a few white ones as well. So I'm arranging them for a nice bouquet and we are going to take it back to the house. Put it on a kitchen table and I'm going to admire it every single day. I cannot tell you how much I enjoy picking our uh, cut flowers from the garden, what we grow together. <sighs> Smells so nice. So we have got the gladioli, that big yellow flower, the tall one. And then we've got the beautiful dahlia, how gorgeous. And then all along we've got a purple, like a, a pinky, light pinky colored sweet pea. We've got cosmos, all different colored cosmos. We've got the calendula, dill. We've got some lemon balm and oregano, that little mauve colored flowers. I think that's it. Okay. We are ready to harvest the peppers. We are going to harvest two different varieties, the paprika pepper and quadri F1 today. So the paprika pepper, it's, I'm going to show you the difference between the two shapes. So it's more long and pointy and this one is more stuffier and it's perfect for stuffed pepper but I'm going to use this because it's delicious, it's got a nice thin skin and it's amazing flavor. So these are the two varieties what we're going to use up today to make our meal. Harvesting these peppers now will encourage the plant to have more flowers and even more vegetables for us. I like this little tool for harvesting the peppers, chilies and tomatoes. More visible on these ones. Look how it's turning from green to this dark before it's gonna turn to yellow. Red Bull's horn, it's looking really good. Look how beautiful shape pepper this is. That's what we are harvesting up there, the paprika pepper. Oh, it smells gorgeous. 
Look all these beautiful peppers. This is enough for us to make tonight's meal. And this will actually make a few meals for me and Al. Oh, it smells so good. I'm gonna show you my excitement of this year's very first tomato. Cherry tomato is ripe. This one is called Crazy Cherry. And I've not grown this before, so let's try this together. Ready? Wow! Finally! I waited for this moment for nearly a year. Mm, so good. Harvesting some basil while we're here. Let's harvest some onions. This onion is looking really good. And I'm harvesting the ones what had the flower stalk. So we are taking taking two. These two. Let's harvest some cucumbers. These are actually gherkins. They're delicious. Fresh eating as well. Meet you back in the kitchen. I've got the meat out of the fridge and I am just now gonna process the onion we've just harvested from the garden. So I'm just going to peel this onion and slice it. And I'm going to use this leftover lard and sausage fat from my previous cooking. Give some extra flavor and we're not gonna waste anything. I love my flowers. Absolutely love it. It's gonna make me so happy now. Right, the compost in here. And just quick sticks go to wash this. Alan is out today, but he's already asked what's for tea tonight. And when I've told him that it's stuffed peppers and cabbages, he was really happy. He really likes it that much, like I do. So that's really good. Just put the lard up. Heat in. Overcast again today. It's not cold, but it's not it's probably not even 20 degrees Celsius yet. And it's two o'clock in the afternoon. I think this one is gonna be enough. Right, 
let's get the peppers ready next. So what I do, I'm just going around with the knife and take the inside out where the seeds are. That's all I do to get these peppers ready so we can stuff them. Chuck it in here where the cabbage leaves are. Some, if it's a small one, I just cut, cut it off first. It's easier to take seed bit out. Oh, it smells like summer. It smells so good. Sometimes I push it down and bring it back up. Doesn't matter if few seeds stays in there, that's fine. Keep my eye on that um, onion behind me. And then we're going to add the rice and minced turkey meat mixture on to that onion where the, to the frying pan and then we're going to cook it for about 20 minutes until that rice partially cooks and the meat turns color and then I'm gonna wait till it cools down a bit so I can handle it with my fingers so we can stuff the peppers and the cabbages before we can do the next step. But this will give us a food for quite a few days and if it's any leftover it up makes an absolutely amazing freezer meal as well. So I just freeze Freeze it in a plastic tub and honestly, three months later, a month later, a week later, take it out of the freezer and it is so good. I do it all the time, it really works. I'm also going to use last year's sauerkraut as a base. Actually, I decided to use the, I'm going to bake this today because I've just remembered that you prefer it that way. In this cast iron and a more pot. Okay, all done. make the tomato mixture ready. Oh, smells so good, it's frozen tomatoes. Okay, I'm going to add, let's try this freeze-dried carrot. Mm. I'm going to add some grated freeze-dried carrots. Freeze-dried this last year. We're going to add a little bit of cayenne pepper for a kick. A little bit of white peppercorn, ground cumin. Half a teaspoon. We're going to add fresh basil in a sec. of salt and some majora okay and I'm going to uh, grab some fresh basil what we've just harvested from the garden 
and I'm just going to put that in there. A little bit of garlic, maybe about five cloves. Just cut it in small pieces like that. It smells so good. This would make actually an amazing tomato soup. There's a little bit of pea in there and dill. Let's put that in there, use it up. The still, I mean, basil smells divine. There's nothing better taste than honestly fresh basil from the garden. Just fantastic. Alright. This crimson, dark purple basil is looking so good. Right, that's it. Perfect. I am just going to put this aside and then we're going to pour this over as a last step for our peppers and cabbages. I've put it too full as always, friends, but it will be fine. It won't take me too long now. Maybe another 15 to 20 minutes. Just break this meat up. The meat is now ready, so I'm just going to remove from the stove and let it cool for about a half an hour. I have separated the meat mixture because it was just too much. So what I'm doing now, I'm going to, it looks a bit dry. So I think I'm gonna use the tomato mixture and I'm just going to mix it together. And let's see, I don't really want to too dry but not too soggy me either just right I've also added some little bit of leftover cooked rice and some broad beans I think this one's good I'm gonna add a bit more to the other one and I think it'll be perfect now Actually, it's now cooled down, so we can start filling. I'm gonna use two dish, one for the cabbage, one for the peppers, because we can't fit all in one. Right, let's start filling the peppers. What I have done in here, on this bottom of this pan, I've added this, some sauerkraut and a bit of leftover sausage we had and some uh, bacon skin for flavour. I'll definitely make too much of this meat mixture, but we're gonna use it up in other dishes. And we are ready to stuff. All the peppers one by one there is a couple of different usually stuff the cabbages sometimes I just, I just put a certain amount in the middle and just fold it over from the top from both sides then just fold it over again or sometimes I just took the ends in it all depends on the size and the texture of the cabbage leaf Ready to do our last step before we put this to the oven. So all the cabbages and peppers are now filled and I'm just going to pour this tomato 
tomato sauce over. And you know, I thought I might have more. Actually, now I'm thinking probably I won't have enough. But I did leave that cabbage salt water behind what I have blanched the cabbage leaves in. So I might top it up if I need to with some extra liquid. recipe how we're going to use this up. shaped it together and this looks like we're on a darker side I forgot the last one but look how lovely this little bread turned out so we already had half of this small loaf but isn't that gorgeous I mean even this one is nice and soft so yeah these are the sourdough bread what we've made together and actually I'm thinking to freeze two of these because I think it's just too many for us so I leave the two out and I'm going to slice this up and we're going to freeze it bag and then to the freezer and whenever we need fresh bread I'm just gonna take this out we still got this much left of that tomato sauce so I put that in a plastic pot and the meat is now it's still cooling down the meat mixture when this is cooled down i'm just going to put this both in in the fridge and i'm sure we'll come up with some recipes to use it up i'm going to check the stuffed peppers and cabbages in about 40 minutes let's check on the peppers and the cabbage oh it smells good it's nearly an hour this is now in here oh smells fantastic 
Oh, wow. I'm going to take this point, the lids off. And I'm going to put this back for an other half an hour without the lids. Dinner's ready. Wow, looking amazing. I'm going to put the lid back on until we're ready to eat. I really enjoyed making tonight's dinner. The stuffed peppers and cabbages, it's one of our favorite and especially again, you know, we waited so long for a fresh peppers and cabbages. So we are going to have dinners now. I'm serving it with sour cream on a top and some sourdough sandwich bread toasted with some butter. Time to have a taste test. What does it look? It's beautiful. Right. Very hot. Hmm. Oh. That was good. Hmm. It's not dry. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me today. You're making, creating this delicious meal. And see you very soon. Bye, friends. Oh,